Well, so much for the top of that new lineup. So much for the new lineup, by the way. And uh, I don't want to hear, well, you know, Texas is a major league team, too. They get paid to play, too. I don't want to hear it. They were 8-14 and 14 coming in. We welcome you to Phillies Post Game Live, presented by Curado Insurance. Ricky Patalico, Ben Davis, in a moment, John Cruck. We talked in the pregame program, Ricky and Ben, about how tough the schedule was going to get. Mets coming in for four. They're going to play Seattle. They're going out there. They're going to play Los Angeles. It's not going to be easy in the month of May. They needed these. You have to beat these teams at home. Uh, uh, this is a Texas Rangers team that w came in not not hitting the ball very well. They they hit a couple home runs here against the Phillies. Uh, they played better than the Phillies in this game, and this this has pretty much been day in day out. I mean, I mean when you really look at it, take away that that Colorado Rockies series, and yeah. the Phillies have not played great baseball. And I'm talking, and I'm not just pointing one thing out. I'm talking having a good blend of baseball where they're getting good pitching from their starters, good relief pitching, and, and the, the uh, offense is going strong. How many times have we seen that if you take away that Rocky series? Not yeah. much. No, not much this at all. This team's got to kick it in gear. You're six games out. Yeah. And don't tell me it's May. It's May. That's a bunch of baloney is what that is. Because once you hit a certain point, it doesn't matter what day it is because you, you think the Mets care? Mets didn't care. They went out and swept the Braves. You think they care that it's May? No. They're up six games right now. Ben, uh, talk to me about the top of the lineup. I realize Bohm had two hits. I realize Real Muto had two hits as well, and he had that home run. Schwarber, nothing. Harper, nothing. And that leadoff spot, I just got it from Carl Graber. I asked our statistician Graves. statistician Graves. The leadoff spot, 150 batting average this season, 211 on base percentage, Oof. 11 runs scored. Those are the table setters, whether it's Schwarber or Segura. Can you put your finger on this? I cannot. I, I jokingly said they need to go out and get Ricky Henderson to go out and be the, the leadoff hitter for the Phillies. Uh, it's been a spot that Joe Girardi, no matter who he puts there, cannot. F they can't fill that void. Uh, there's nobody on base when Bryce Harper comes up. It's been something that's been nagging at the Phillies the entire season, and it has not gotten better. Bottom line is the Rangers outplayed the Phillies tonight. The Phillies looked, they looked lethargic tonight. I don't know if it was the off day, uh, but it just didn't, it, it just wasn't. You thought after that first inning where they go and get three runs back, you go up three to two after that clunk of a first inning that Ranger had, you think it was going to be okay, but it just didn't turn out that way. You don't think they had The seventh seven. inning, I, I will say the seventh inning, that was, that was the whole game in a nutshell. Backbreaker. The, the backbreaker. Second and third, nobody out. You got one, two, three up, and you don't even push a run across. That was, to me, the, the, the embodiment of the whole game. Let's go across the street and check in with the television voice of the Philadelphia Phillies. Call tonight's game with John Cruck, Tom McCarthy. Tommy, thanks for being with us. I'm trying to put my finger on it. You yeah. know, and, and, and again, as I said at the top of the program, yeah, they're all getting paid to play. I get it. But if you've got designs on a playoff spot, there's 15% of the season that's gone. It seems like it just started, and here we are, getting late early. Your thoughts on tonight? Well, I think what Ricky said is important. I mean, the Mets swept a doubleheader today, so you find yourself six games back. So, you know, whatever it is that you do to try to get yourself going to get back within reach here. Now, again, a lot of teams make the playoffs. You know, it's, it doesn't. You don't have to win the division to make the playoffs, but you, you do have to start playing a little better baseball from an offensive standpoint. Statistically, the runs scored, the OPS, the runners in scoring position, it's all good. It is. Statistically, it's all good. But it's just not getting it done on a consistent basis to kind of get yourself uh, within reach in this division. Tom, your thoughts on Ranger tonight? Uh, just not sharp, I didn't think. Yeah, Ricky. again, it's, it seems as though he's been that way all season long. Uh, he was getting ahead early, but he yeah. was making mistakes late. Yeah, I just not sharp. Uh, you know, just missing and, and missing. I mean, Ricky, you know this as a pitcher. Missing it by just a hair on the outside or inside part of the plate, but he has to be right on. He's mixing it He's mixing it around the strike zone. So just off a hair. I, I mean, it, the first inning, I thought it could have gone a whole, di whole different way if he had limited the pitches a little bit more. And maybe the outing goes a little bit more. Maybe he finds something a little early. That first inning to me was a rough one for him because he just didn't look as sharp after he got the first outs. 
Tom, physical errors, obviously they happen. Alec Boehm had a big one tonight. But the one that wasn't went down as a, as a, as a physical error was the ball that Simeon hit and ends up beating that ball out that he hit to Alec Boehm. I had more issues with that one than I did the other one that he just, it's just a physical error. Uh, those are the things that, that can't happen. I know it doesn't go down there. Simeon gets a hit and an RBI out of it. What, what do you, what's your take on that play? Well, I do think you're right about that, Ben. I mean, obviously, it, 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 the internal clock. I mean, Simeon, he was busted at him. He smelled hit. So the internal clock, you know, the, that little hesitation, it, it, you, you got to be able to get the throw over there. There's no doubt about that. Uh, he has played well over third base. I, I, I actually look at that just the same way as the previous one. It's a physical error. It's not even a mental one because he sort of double clutched. I don't know if he had a grip on the baseball or not. So I credit Simeon for the speed and the hustle. Uh, but I actually think that's even a physical error, too. Uh, and I, I'm with you. It could have gone down as that. It could have gone down as, a, as an error if they, if they wanted to. Um, you know, it's at that point, I, I think after the two strikeouts, my feeling was they were going to get out of that inning. And then the, two run, and then the home run happens. That's, that's the hard part there. Tommy, back to Ranger for a moment. Are, were we, are we placing too much expectation on his shoulders? Certainly after, what, a 1.36 ERA. He had 39 appearances. He started, what, 13 games. And I think there was this expectation that he would be a solid starter. Maybe this is just what he is. I'm, I'm not criticizing, but maybe we we're expecting too much. No, I, I don't think we are, Michael, and I don't think this is what he is. I think what he is is closer to what you thought he would be at the start of the year. I really do, and I think he's going to be fine. I just think that, you know, sometimes you have outings or you, ha you have runs like this. I do not think that this is what he is on a nightly basis. I really do not. I think he's closer to what – listen, what he did last year was phenomenal. It's going to be hard to duplicate that. But I think he's closer to that than what he was tonight. I really do, I, and – you know, there's nothing that tells me that more than his ability to control the tempo of the strike zone. I just think he has that ability to control the tempo of the strike zone. I just don't think he's done it yet. And lastly, Tom, you heard the, the numbers for the leadoff spot. Maybe just one of yeah. those things. I don't know. 150 batting average, 211 OBP, 11 runs scored. Uh, what gives? Yeah, I, I don't think there's any way to kind of sugarcoat it. It's just got to be better. I, I mean, it's, it's, it's got to set the tone for everybody else. And I did think that, I think I said this in the pregame show, I thought that Kyle would be back in the leadoff spot tonight. Uh, my hope is that he'll continue to try to, you know, find that rhythm of getting on base and finding the ability to, to, to put some people on with Bryce up and with JT up and Castellanos up. Uh, but obviously, it's got to be better. I mean, those are not numbers that will dictate success if the leadoff hitter is not putting together better on-base percentage than that. All right, my friend. We thank you, uh, as always, and we'll check you tomorrow in the pregame program. Tom McCarthy Thanks, joining Mike. us. All right, guys. From across the street in the booth. All right, we talked about the, the seventh inning. And by the way, Schwarber, we were mentioning him 0 for 5. That's it. I mean, zero. No runs, no hits, no runs better than no walks. And we talked about how he can get on base. His on base percentage is strong. It just wasn't there tonight. 188 batting average. But go ahead. Red flag. Mm -hmm. Anybody red flag with him in that ninth inning trying to bunt? Not, not that I'm saying yeah. that he shouldn't do that every once in a while. But, but to me, that's saying I didn't want to hit my way on. I wanted to just try to dunk one in there. So, so we, I mean, I understand where he was going. I just find it a little odd that that's the first time we've really seen him try that. Also, after Roman Quinn had tried it, fouled, uh, popped out doing it, and I, he's a guy that seems to be more prone to, to well, bunting. He, yeah, but Roman also tried it earlier on in the ball game. He actually had one that just missed that earlier the in the ball game, and then he popped the second one up there too. So you got to get that ball down, especially if you're Roman Quinn. I'm thinking about ground, ground, ground. That's all I want to do because he could fly. Ben, you talked about the seventh inning was a microcosm of the entire night. Let's take a look at the seventh, and it starts with Roman Quinn. And a little infield single right here as the Phillies trail 6-3 to three on a full count. Yeah, it's a line drive to first base, and they can't handle it. Obviously, Roman Quinn's going to beat that out all day long. You're thinking, all right, we got some speed on the bases. We're going to get things going here. And then Matt Veerling comes up and does what he does off lefties, which is continue to hit the baseball hard. Unfortunately, on this? Un no, unfortunately, it hits that half wall. If that gets by that little wall, Roman goes in standing up, and Veerling might actually get to third. But with zero outs, you're not taking that chance, number one. So I think Dusty Wathen does the right thing there. And then... 
Number two, you have two runners in scoring position. You should be able to do something. Yep. But this is how this is what happens. When you got one, two, and three coming up, you're thinking, all right, I like my chances. So Dusty, it's the right move. Doesn't work out that way. Good change up there. Uh, and he goes down, does Alec Bohm, and you're thinking, all right, well, let's see if we can get out of it here. We still have Bryce Harper up. It just didn't end well. Yeah, that's, you talk about one, two, and three. It was one, two, three. Once those two guys had gotten you, the board. You, you seriously cannot ask for anything better. You get your eight, nine hitters to get on base in scoring position, both of them, and you have the one, two, and three hitters coming up in your lineup. That's where the blame. One, and you only put one ball in play. The blame falls in that inning. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's hear what the manager has to say. Here's Joe Girardi post game in the clubhouse. Ranger tonight to just tough luck in some cases. <laughs> when he made mistakes, they were big mistakes. Um, up in the zone, change up, up, slider, up. Um, and then we gave him extra outs. I think it was in the sixth inning. What did you make of those two plays? It looks like, look at Alec backhanded the one hit right at him and kind of then he spot fumbled. Yeah, I mean, I heard him talking about that it kind of went like this, um, you know, because it's probably from a left-handed hitter, right? Um, those are plays that he's capable of making. He's played, he mean, he's been playing pretty well. He's been playing great. So it's one night. we got to move on. Uh, Ranger was giving up some hard contact. Do you have any sense of what the difference was for him tonight? I just think some mistakes in the middle of the plate, you know, not getting to the edges where he lives. Um, I thought he got, he was better after the first inning. You know, he started mixing his pitches a little bit more, using his, his slider. Uh, and then he hung a slider. Was that the right decision for Dusty to hold Roman Quinn at third there? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, there's nobody out. You can't take a chance. Easier said than done, but when something like that happens for Roman at third base, like how do you guys prevent that from snowballing for him because it just seems like the, it's kind of like a cluster for him. Yeah, so. uh, you just encourage him and, and you go back to work, right? You go back to work and, and make sure that he gets his work in and um, he showed that he's able to respond pretty well, so I'd expect him to do it again. Uh, I mean, Herrera pinch hit there in the ninth, but it was a late number. So he was, he does not, okay, so he's not feeling well. It's it's a, a real bad case, we believe, of allergies. You know, he's been COVID tested, flu tested, all clear. It's just it's like his head was pounding, and, he, and you know, we knew he'd be available to us tonight, but we weren't going to start him. So I had to scratch him. And then the Quinn, Quinn I mean, you try to get, get, get two bunts down. That's got to be frustrating for a guy like that. It's kind of built on speed. Yeah, I mean, you know, he's one for three bunting, right? I think we could all live with that. Well, you know, after the first inning, you responded back. It's kind of tough to get some runs. Just get some bats later on. We just didn't get any hits with runners in scoring position. Um, I think the first inning we had three or four hits. We ended up with eleven, right? Um, we had some opportunities, weren't able to take advantage of it. A beleaguered Joe Girardi seemed very frustrated and down about a loss against a, a, an eight-win, now nine-win Texas Rangers team. Uh, he said of his pitcher, Ranger Suarez, when he made mistakes, they were big, big mistakes. And then of Alec Bohm, who had issues again in the field tonight, he said those are plays he's capable of making. But he said, look what happened the first time. He had some issues, and then he righted the ship, and everything turned out to be okay, it's, at least until tonight. It's one, er one error. It wasn't a fielding error. It was an exchange right. error on himself. But I thought Ben's right. The, the other play that he had, he should have made the play. You know, you, it's, it's sometimes you have to know what's going on in front of you. This is why you always think ahead. This is why you try to think ahead. Okay, this is a batter. He could run a little bit. I got to get rid of this quicker. You know, make it quicker on the Both exchange. The make it quicker on the throw. And, and, and it, you know, that's why, that's why you sit and say, well, think about his errors. Not many with the glove. Am I right? No. Most of them are throwing errors. Yep. But that one right there, that's... That, that goes along with a mental mistake on top of a physical error. Mm -hmm. Well, take a look at this ball. It's just, you know, it's just the exchange. He overran it to start with. The exchange just wasn't clean, and then he just doesn't get enough on it to first base. Um, the, the, the fact of the matter is he needs to get the lead runner. This yeah. is the big leagues. You need to get that lead runner at the least. Now, Saranthi comes in. He's thinking one. he's going to put out the fire here, and this is the second one. This is the ball that Simeon hits. 
right? It's, he just flat out outruns it. It just can't happen. The play, the, the other issue that I have with this is the play's right in front of you. It's not like his back was to the baseball, like he's a second baseman going up the middle where you can't even see the runner it's running. The, it's the double crow hop is what it turns into. You have to be able to get rid of that ball. I was lucky enough to play with, uh, with Scott Rowland at third base behind me, and that play was a can of corn for him. And, and I just be. believe if you're in the big league level, you should be able to make that play day in, day out. Yeah, I don't know whether he could have gotten a lead runner. He went to first base on, on, the, uh, on, on the, the, the throwing error. I don't know. I think if he gets the ball out of his glove on that, on that error, I think he, he definitely has a play at second. Yeah, yeah. He definitely have a play The whole second. problem was his exchange. He couldn't hold on to the baseball. Yeah, let's take a break. We're going to hear from Alec Bohm. What can he say? This is the second cluster of issues that he has had in the field we'll hear from him in a moment as we continue post game live presented by cure auto insurance Phillies post game live is presented by cure auto insurance see how much you can save at cure.com 